nice straight back, your meditation seat, if you like. So beginning where we left off last time we were together. Just taking a moment to sit tall, centering yourself in the present moment, and taking some slower, deeper breaths. Very nice. And we're going to begin with a, a few rounds of the alternate nostril breath. So with the right hand, bring two fingers to your third eye. And then just closing the right nostril with the thumb. We'll take a moment to breathe in and out through the left a few times, just getting used to this restriction. That's good. And then swapping sides, close the left nostril with your fourth finger, if that works. There's a few different ways of doing this if you'd rather. And just check the right side is open. That's nice. And then we're going to breathe in through the right side. Close with a thousand, exhale, left. Inhale, same side. Close with the fourth finger, exhale, right. Inhale, same side. Close, exhale, left. Inhale, same side. Exhaling a new side on every exhale. So take your time and just in your own rhythm, change sides on the exhale. And just coming to a conclusion on the next exhale, please release your hands to your lap and just focusing on breathing through the nostrils. Close your eyes and turn your gaze within, checking in with yourself, with your inner landscape. We've been doing this introspective practice this week. So with our yoga practice, it's not just a physical practice, it's also the mind and spirit. So can we just tune into those less tangible aspects of ourselves now. And maybe you'd like to just check in with the emotional temperature or the colour of your inner landscape, whatever way is good for you just to observe how you're feeling. That's good. And we're going to just rest your gaze in the lap for a moment. And start by just opening up the spine a little bit. So this is kind of good for this time of the morning. Shoulders together, arching the back. And inhale, pushing the chest forward, rolling the shoulders down. Exhale, round the back, arching. Inhale, pushing the chest forward, bringing the shoulders back. Exhale, round and hollow. Inhale, arch. That's great. Just take your time rolling the shoulders forward. And on the inhale, rolling the back. Good. And we'll just give it a little shimmy. Fantastic. Let's do the same sort of thing on hands and knees. So coming to our cat stretches, which we often begin with. This is a great one for your screen break or if you have a moment. Inhale, lift the chin and the chest and the tailbone. And exhale, tucking the tail and hollowing the belly. So just feeling into your spine. Any movements you can feel in between the vertebrae. Curling up on the in-breath. Curling out on the out breath. That's marvellous. Just do a couple more, please. Good. 
Good. And then tucking the toes, we're going to shift the hips back to the heels and walk the hands away for a little bit of a stretch, bowing the head. And then come back to all fours. Inhale, looking up, lifting the tailbone. And we'll press back and up to downward facing dog. So leading from the hips, lift your bottom up and back. And let's have a bit of a wiggle here. So moving around in the pose, moving the knees, wiggling the hips. That's nice. And then when you're ready, walk the feet to the hands and take a a forward bend of any kind. Shrugging the shoulders, bowing the head. Please relax the mouth. Shrug the shoulders. Good. On the in-breath, extend the spine horizontally. Exhaling bow. Inhale, come all the way to the top. Breathing in. And exhale back to the heart. Deep breath in, mountain pose, lovely. Give the shoulders a little shrug and pause in your mountain pose, fantastic. So on the next inhale, sweep up. On the exhale, we bow. Good, inhale, extend the spine. Exhaling fall. And then rooting the feet, bending the knees, bring the arms up and overhead. Big stretch at the top there. And bring the hands home to the heart. Deep breath in. Mountain pose. Lovely. Let's take a moment in mountain pose. Take a breath. And closing your eyes, if you like, just checking in with yourself now after that brief warm up. How are things going? And on the next inhale, we'll rise up once more. On the next exhale, please bow. Inhaling, extend the spine. Exhaling, fold. And we'll bring the right foot forward and the left foot back. Take a, a big high lunge here. Stretching out. Thank you. Just opening up the legs this morning and then we're going to change legs. So <clears throat> back foot to the front. Big lunge. And then both feet to the back. Let's take a high plank, please. And we will lower ourselves gently down, knees first, elbows close onto your tummy, point the toes. Good. So lengthen through the legs, curl up for your baby cobra. So just a little one. Lift the chin and the chest, really pushing the toenails into the ground, rolling the shoulders down. Let's take a breath and then tucking the toes. Exhale your hips up and back. And we're back in down dog. Breathing deeply. Lovely. That's nice. Lifting the hips up and back. Take a nice stretch here. Taking a breath. And then we'll make our way to the top of the mat. Forward bend. Inhale halfway. Exhaling bow. And then rooting the feet, we'll sweep the arms up and over. Big stretch. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale deeply. Mountain pose. Good. Just give the shoulders a shrug and pause in your mountain pose. Feel the earth beneath your feet. Extend up through the crown of the head. And on the inhale, we'll bring the arms up and over. On the exhale, pushing the air away. Flow nose to knee. Inhale, floating up, extending horizontally. Exhale, mindfully back, nose to knee. And then stepping the left leg back again. We're going to bring the back knee down to a low lunge. 
That's great. So just getting comfortable here. You can drift that front knee a bit deeper if you like. And then we're going to plant the left hand on the ground or on a block. Right. So if you, or a book. <laughs> and then picking the back foot up off the ground. Can you reach behind and see if your foot appears? So some people kind of lasso it with a strap or, or just point the fingers towards the heel. You might be able to catch, you might be able not, whatever is working for you. And then we're going to kick the foot into the hand and push that foot away from you. And you should feel a bit of a spark in the thigh muscle. That's lovely. Just taking your time and then we'll release. Very good. And with the hands either side of the front foot again, we're going to walk the hands back and stop to straighten the front leg. Good. Extending through the front leg. So it's a, a runner's lunge, Pete, with the toes tucked under or pointed, whatever works better for you. And some people like to have the hands up on some supports for this one. When you're in position, it's a firming of this front leg. So firm the thigh muscle, firm the calf muscle. Putting the foot on a kind of diagonal, push the ball of the foot away like you're pressing on an accelerated pedal. And you should get this feeling of liveliness in that front leg. Hoover that front thigh bone into your body. That's it. Feel the low bellies drawing in. Good. And then we're coming back to our low lunge that we often do. Nice. So that leg's done. Should we do the second side? Picking up the back knee, changing legs. Big lunge, back knee down. Getting into position. And just hanging out in your low lunge for a few breaths. Wonderful. And then you're going to pin the back foot and maybe you can catch hold with or without a strap or just the trousers or, or just in that general direction. It's, it doesn't really matter. Just find a version. It's a tricky one and this one is easier to do at home when you've got a carpet and underlay underneath your mat. So don't be sore. Don't let your knee hurt you if you're in the hallway like Liz and the floor's a bit hard. Make sure you've got some padding, kicking the foot away from you if you've got it caught. Oh, yes. Lovely. And then we're going to transition to the runner's lunge on this side. So both hands to the ground. Get the back foot in a good place for you. And then walking the hands back. So they're near the back knee. Strengthen that left leg. So pull the muscles onto the bone. Top and bottom of the leg. Diagonal with the foot. Extending out through the football of the foot, drawing the thigh bone into your body. Fantastic. Keep breathing. Oh, well done. And then we'll return to our low lunge in your own way. That was good. Let's come to all fours and just pause for a moment. Have a, a little bit of a shimmy. And I'd, I'd like to invite you to open the shoulders with me. So let's raise the right arm. And look up towards the fingertips. Beautiful. Take a lovely breath. And bring the back of the hand to the ground underneath your chest. That's nice. And we just sort of thread the arm through, don't we, going on to the side of your head onto the fingertips taking a nice turn fantastic so you might want to raise the left arm bring the back of the left hand round the corner turning round the corner getting a lovely twist happening And then come to all fours. Wonderful. Circle the shoulders a few times. I'm going to raise the left arm. So raising the left arm, looking up to the left fingertips. Take a breath. 
and bring the back of the left hand to the ground, threading the arm through, coming down onto your shoulders, fingertips on the right hand. Marvellous. Keep the breath flowing. And then we'll meet on all fours. Good stuff. Fanning out the fingers, circling the shoulders. Let's take a deep breath in, lift the chin and the chest. Tucking the toes and then leaning from the hips. So bring your tailbone up and back. Down the dog, bowing the head and just pedaling the knees a little bit. Can I invite you to our first of our three legged dogs? All right, so raise the right leg, see how that feels. We can extend up through the ball of the foot to the sky. Wonderful, have a big stretch, strengthen and stretch through those legs. And then coming down, take a break if you need to, or straight away raise the other leg, whatever works for you. Extending up through the left leg, lengthening through the ball of the foot, taking a big breath here, and then both feet to the ground, both knees to the ground. Good for you. Let's point the toes and go ahead and walk the hands right to the top corners of your mat. Let's walk the knees back a bit till those hips are directly over the knees. Take a breath and bow the head. Bring the forehead to the ground. Anahatasana, the heart opener. So if you can't bring your head to the ground, don't worry, or you could put your brick or block underneath your head. Broaden the armpits out to the sides. Bring the shoulder blades in towards your heart center in the back there. Keeping the elbows off the ground. Just take a couple of breaths and imagine the middle of your back melting and softening. That's just great. The heart opener. And then we're going to come back to all fours. On the in breath, look up, lift your chest forward. On the exhale, lift the hips up and back, down the dog. Let's try that same action in this position. So broaden the armpits, hug the forearms towards each other to get some muscle action in your back and then just soften and melt and arch the middle of your back towards the floor. Relax your heart center towards the ground. Take a breath and then we'll walk to the top and we'll all meet in a forward bend, please. So get comfortable in your forward bend. So you, please feel free to use any props, any blocks or bricks. It's not really about having a, a really nasty, long, deep hamstring stretch. It's about feeling good about yourself, really. Our practice today is a brightening for the emotions. So can I get you to bring the feet to hip distance and strengthen the legs without locking them? And then just bring the hands to the the widest part of your lower leg on the outside of the calf muscles there. There's special handles, I always think, that you can put your palms on. That's good. And taking the knees are directly over the heels, firm the legs, and you're going to squeeze the palms towards each other, but resist with the legs. You get a bit of muscle action in the legs. You could lift the hips a bit higher, extend the nose a bit lower. That's good. Relaxing the mouth. Brilliant. And then root the feet, bend the knees to rise. And we'll come back to standing tall. Wonderful. Turning your awareness within once more. I'd like you to imagine, just pretend that you've got like a, a set of lights inside your upper chest. And we're going to switch on, switch on the lights. And just imagine you've got like a brightness in the torso, behind the rib cage, this kind of a bright feeling. That's good. Let's give that a go. And as you breathe in, it gets brighter. That's it. As you exhale, it stays the same. Inhale, brighter. 
Exhale, relax onto the brightness. One more time, brighten on the inhale and relax onto the brightness. That's good. And then we're going to step the feet a bit wider. So getting the feet as wide as you can. Bring the hands to the hips. Fantastic. Lining up the feet like we do. We're going for a wide legged forward bend, please. So take a deep breath in, brighter. And on the exhale, please bow and bring the hands to the ground or, or to your bricks, whatever is good for you. Strengthening and lengthening the legs, relaxing the toes, heels are heavy. Good. And I'm going to walk the hands off the side of the mat. Fantastic. And then inhale to extend the spine. And exhale, bow. Great. So you get this feeling that the brightness in your chest as you inhale, you're going to shine it forward between the hands to the opposite side of the room even. That's good. And exhale, bow and fold. And see if you can shine it back between your knees to the other side of the room. So it's almost like you've got a, a torch on your chest. Let's, let's try that again. Inhale, shine forward. High bones back. Exhale, shine backwards. High bones strong. One more time. Inhale, extend forward. I'm going to hold it here and move those thigh bones back and apart. So you should start to feel a lovely stretch in the backs of the legs there. Make sure it's lovely and not too much. <laughs> and then we'll take a breath and exhale, bow and walk the hands back towards your feet. That's lovely. Let's bring the left hand forward. So it's off the front of the mat, making a, a kind of triangle with the two feet in the left hand. And then we're going to see if you can bend the left elbow. If you can't, come up onto fingertips or onto your block, look underneath the left arm. And then the right hand's going to thread through to the outside of the left leg, drawing your belly in and over, looking underneath the arm. Getting heavy in the heels. Drawing your belly through. And then we'll come back to centre. Swap hands, please. So you've got the right hand firmly in place. Bend the right elbow just enough to tuck your nose underneath it. And then please thread the left hand through and Roaring yourself through underneath the arm, rotating the chest to look at the opposite wall. And then back to centre and bow. Let's root the feet, bend the knees and come up. And just pause for a moment with the hands on the hips. Reconnecting with this brightness in the inner body. Very good. Let's take the whole of the left foot out when you're ready. Bend that knee to a square. And then heel toe the back foot a bit wider. I'm going to float up my arms for warrior two. So go ahead and roll the shoulders down. Check in with your alignment tips. So we're going to pin the belly button in, scoop the front hip under, rolling the shoulders away from the ears. Gently rest your gaze on your fingertips. That's lovely. Getting a sense of brightness, a sense of being lit from within in the upper torso. And then inhale straight up. Squaring off the left foot, let's take the whole of the right foot out. Then we'll do the same on the second side. Keeping that bright feeling in the chest.
That's nice. And I'd like to offer you to reverse the warrior, if you would. So we're going to turn that right hand palm face up. Bring the left hand down your back leg and then sweeping it alongside the ear. Having a lovely opening, a lovely stretch, maybe looking up towards the upraised hand. That's nice. Looking good. We'll take a breath here. And then please bring the right forearm to the right thigh and the left arm alongside your ear for a side stretch, you know, like we do. Give the shoulder a shrug, extend from the little finger to the little toe, getting a big stripe all down the side of your body. Wonderful. Take a deep breath into that expansion there in the side body. And when you're ready, exhale down, come up to warrior two. That's good. So now we've had a bit of movement. Could you please imagine this sense of brightness is like light coming out of the middle finger, right hand, and the back hand. Imagine you can breathe. Some light beams out front and back through the fingertips. That's nice. And then inhale, straighten. Let's turn on the heels to the second side. So keeping those arms in the river of light. Back to warrior two on the second side. Nice. And we're going to reverse the warrior here. So turning the left palm up, right hand down. Let's come on over. A lovely stretch, maybe looking up towards the fingertips, maybe not. Whatever works for you. Looking for an opening all up the side body. Let's inch the fingertips a bit lower towards your knee. Take a breath. And then the left arm comes to left thigh side stretch. Extending out through the little finger and the little toe, the whole side body expanding. Getting a nice sense of a straight line all down the side of your body, little finger to little toe. We'll take a breath. Exhale, lower the arm. And then when you're ready, come up to warrior two. Find that horizontal line of light. Shrug the shoulders and inhale, straighten, feet to parallel. Great, let's step the feet together. Come to standing tall and begin to just checking in with our inner world. Hopefully it's looking a bit more bright. Perhaps the, the luminosity has increased. We're going to come to a bit of standing on my one leg if you want. So maybe you might want to hold the wall. So we can be the right hand on the wall. Right leg is the standing leg. And if you want to tough it out in the middle of the room, that's absolutely fine. We'll catch hold of the front of the left knee, standing tall, keeping your eyes on a single point. Just go ahead and take that left knee out to the left. So opening the hip like a gate. Brilliant. Let's come back a, just a little bit, halfway maybe, and then the hands on the inside of the knee. And we slide it down towards the ankle or even catch hold of the foot. Up to you. And um, we're going to imagine we're pushing down on a big step. So pull up with the hand, push down on the foot, lifting the hip up and out to the side. Yeah, keep that right leg very strong and steady. Fantastic. So you've got the sole of the foot pointing towards the ground at the moment. And if you feel like it, Turn it to face forward. So it's a tr tricky one, but it's a good one. So pull back with the hand and push forward with the foot. Yeah. And we'll take a breath and release. And just take that, leave that for a moment. And if you were to pause and observe, you might find one side. It's feeling a little bit more open than the other already. It's a great one for opening the hips. 
Let's change sides. So pouring the weight into the other leg. Let's catch hold of the right knee. Take it out to the right like a gate. Sole of the foot towards the ground. And then reaching down for your ankle or your foot. Push the foot into the hand. That's lovely. Getting a bit of a stretch happening. Pushing the foot into the hand and the hand into the foot. Thank you. Let's maybe turn the sole of the foot to face forward with the knee still bent. Push like a big button in the air. Excellent. And release. And just you might want to have a little wiggle. See how that feels. Oh, pretty free. <laughs> Come to standing tall. Take a breath. Excellent. So we're coming back to the three legged dog, which you did excellently last time. The only difference is we're going to do it near the wall and bring our foot to the wall or the door. If you haven't got a wall with any space on it, the door is fine. So come a little closer to to the wall. If you want, you know, you, don't, you can just do three legged dog in the middle of the room. If you have a lot of art or whatever and don't want to risk it. But if you're playing, let's just bring the right big toe up the wall. So it's just three legged dog, but the toes are pushing into the wall. That's all we're going to do for now. Just get a sense of that. You can actually walk the foot a bit higher and get a really, a really effective hamstring stretch here. So straightening the underneath leg as well, if you can. Yeah. See if you can straighten that left, left leg. Good. And then we'll change legs. So same as before. Take a rest anytime you need, but if you're in a good place, extend the top leg as high up as it'll go. Both legs are quite straight. And you've got a bit of pressure between the, the top foot and the wall. So it's not just resting there, it's actually pushing into the wall. Oh, yeah, that's good. Very nice indeed. Let's, let's come down and just take a, a bit of a rest. So Rachel's there already. And Liz, you look like you're going to go up today. I'm excited for you. <laughs> All right, let's 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 do it. So you can just stick with that if you want. Three-legged dog at the wall or in the middle of the room. But if you're playing, this time the, the sole of the right foot comes to hip height. So not too high, just kind of halfway up, really. And then <clears throat> the action is really push that foot into the wall. And as you do, the other foot might come up. So you have to really give it some welly. Push the foot into the wall. Like you're putting up a poster. Oh, well done, Liz is up. Well done. This getting longer every time we do this. This is good. Let's try again. Second side. So sometimes it's easier on one side than the other. So push the left foot into the wall. Hip height. Push, push, push. Both feet up if you're playing. Yay, Rachel. And then come on down. <laughs> Fantastic. Looking good, gang. Glad to see you're smiling, Natasha. <laughs> like to... <laughs> Let's have a bit of a rest and twirl the wrists. Whatever you think. So we've got a couple more games like this. And it is supposed to be fun. So if you're not having fun, remember, you don't have to do it. But it is very enlivening, this practice. So it will make your day much more cheery if you have a go. So should we do the other version? This one's a bit harder. So if you don't want to go harder, you can stick with what we've just been doing. But if you're playing, we're going to bring the right leg high up the wall this time. Uh-huh. And really push like mad with the right foot and get the left foot equally high. That's good. And then really gluing that right foot to the ground. Raise the left leg. 
<laughs> Locking the elbows really helps. Changing legs. And then we'll come on down. Superb. That was good. Let's give the wrists a little bit of love. Twirl them or bring the backs of the hands. Whatever feels good for you. One more side, please. All right. <laughs> You're all smiling. I like it. <laughs> it's good. Let's come on up. Second and final side. So left foot as high up the wall as you like. Push like mad through the sole of the left foot. Glue that foot to the wall. I've only got the toes touching, but they're really glued. And then the other leg comes up. Raise the right leg. Oh, back to the wall. Raise the left leg. Back to the wall, back to the ground, back to kneeling. Take a seat and we're done. Oh, thank you so much. Let's just twirl the wrists like you're a flamenco dancer. <laughs> so whatever version you did, it's quite strong on the wrist, but that is a good thing. And then we'll bring the backs of the hands to the tops of the legs like we do. A bit of a crease with the wrists pouring over the edges of the thighs, rolling the shoulders down. Shim the shoulders, take a breath. And relax into the breath. That's lovely, taking your time, just observing the breath for a few moments. Well done. Check in with your in a landscape. Hopefully that's made you feel more lively and brighter and more cheery. I always think that handstand is one of the ones that is great for your mental health because it can really flip your mood to, into a, a good place. It's, even if you just do a, a three-legged dog, it can be very enlivening so just just check on the effect of that short practice on your inner world and hopefully it's been a, a positive effect for you i don't think unless you actually hurt yourself or fall over i don't have anyone coming down from handstand going oh i feel worse <laughs> so hopefully you feel just a smidgen better and that can really help so thank you for for playing especially if this was your first one this week well done Corinne. and Let's take our time just to transition to the one with the legs extended. All right, so we're going to extend the legs, come up onto fingertips. This will further release your wrists if your wrists are feeling sore. Make the make the cupcake hands, walk your bottom back, but just nice and gently on the fingertips. Bend the elbows, circle the shoulders. Just going to walk your bum back an inch or two and get those sitting bones really connected with the ground, pushing the heels away, sitting up tall. And let's bring the shoulders up to the ears, towards each other, and then down your back, and then lift and brighten in the collarbones. Fantastic. Connect with the inner light. Take a breath into that bright feeling there. Lovely. We're going to take a twist to the left. So taking the right hand to the left leg, lifting fingertips around the corner. Inhale, brighten. Exhale, rotate and turn and turn, turn. Looking over your shoulder. And inhale, center. And relax the shoulders down. Let's take the second side. Lifting up tall and looking over your shoulder. Drawing in and up.
Brilliant. And then inhale, center. Now walk your bum back a bit. Bring the arms overhead, rolling the shoulders down. Very nice. Take a deep breath, brighten up. And on your out breath, please fold to your seated forward bend. So don't, don't make it too tough on yourself. So bend the knees a little, back off a little. So it's a more enjoyable. Softening your upper back towards your legs. We're not looking for any, any harshness in those hamstrings. Just a, a stretch, which you can feel, but still feels quite okay. Let's breathe yourself a little deeper with each exhale. And then inhale to emerge. And roll the shoulders down. Very good. Let's take the sole of the left foot in. Walk knees out to the side. Hands either side of the straight leg and we'll take a breath. And exhaling, bow and fold. And we'll come back to centre and moving nice and slowly now because we're, we're getting to the last 15 minutes or so. So just gently changing sides. We're going to move into the second side. Hands either side of the straight leg. Taking a breath and a fold. Breathing your way down into this Legged forward bend. We call this one Jano Shushasana, very grounding and calming pose. So as you exhale and soften into it, notice the effect that this body shape is having on your mental processes. It's very, very calming and grounding. And then inhale to emerge. And let's release the legs. Well done. Please lean back into your hands and just twirl the ankles. So we're coming to some lying down stuff just for the cool down. So please join me on your back with the knees up when you're ready. I'll just do that one where you cuddle the knees in and gently rock from side to side. And dropping the knees over to the ground on the right, spreading out the arms, come into a little bit of a lying down twist now. Relaxing into the shape, letting yourself soften into the shape. Fantastic. And then inhale to center. And swing the knees over to the opposite side. And just take a few moments on the opposite side. And then we'll swing back to centre. And please bring the feet to the ground. 
just pause for a moment, make any adjustments to make sure you're in a straight line. And what's quite nice is just to pick up your bottom, give it a bit of a shake and move it half an inch towards your head. So you've got an extra arch in the spine. We'll relax the shoulders underneath you. And please raise the right leg, catch hold of the back of the right thigh, pushing that thigh bone away from you. And have a look at your foot. See if you can make it on the diagonal, so not flexed, not pointed, sort of halfway, extending up through the balls of the feet. That's good. So you're looking for a straight line from the ball of the big toe to the hip bone and strengthen that leg and push the thigh bone away from you. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Keep breathing, firming those leg muscles. We'll take a breath. And let's bring that right ankle onto the left knee. And this right knee comes out to the side. Please catch hold of the back of the left thigh with both hands. So you're threading the needle. I'm sure we've all done this one together before. And there is an option to straighten the un underneath leg, if you like. Extend up through the ball of the foot again. Just lengthening through that whole leg. Moving that right knee out to the right. That's good. And then we'll take a breath and relax. Good, both feet to the ground. Just pick up your bottom and shake it a bit, move it towards the head, find that lovely arch in the spine. Thank you, let's raise the left leg, hold the back of the left thigh and strengthen the left leg, extending up through the ball of the foot. A really big extension there. Well done. And then we're going to bring that left ankle the bottom knee, let the knee fall out to the side. Good. And if you want to, gather up the back of the right leg and maybe even straighten it, threading the needle like we do.
There you go. Sorry, guys. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Excellent. This is this my ear things. <laughs> so we're nearly there anyway. We're coming to bridge pose, please. So coming up to bridge. Yeah. Getting comfortable. I think I, I lent on them. It turns them off sometimes. <laughs> Which you shouldn't. Marvellous. Taking a nice breath. And floating your way down. We'll just pause for a moment with the knees together. Thank you, getting comfortable. Are you going to be warm enough? We have a very brief shavasana, but maybe you might need your jumper or your socks or something. So just getting a layer on if you want to, and then come to a comfortable lying down position. Shrugging the shoulders, palms facing up. Making yourself really comfy. That's nice. Allow the fingers to gently curl. And consciously relax your jaw. Separate the teeth. Relax the mouth. Allowing the tongue to rest back in the head. Smoothing the brow. All expression fades now. And sinking back into the ground. Feel the weight of your body relaxing into the crown. And just for a few moments, we'll take rest. Feel yourself getting heavier. Feel the ground beneath you, supporting your weight easily. Relax your weight into the ground. Give your weight to the earth, just for a few more moments, letting go of everything now. That's lovely. So we'll take a deeper breath now. Please come back to your breathing and breathe more deeply. And on the next inhale, maybe you'd like to bring your arms up and overhead. Have a lovely stretch. And roll onto the right side, resting on your right side. Getting comfortable on your right side. And 
we'll press ourselves up to seated. Come take a comfortable seat. However you like to sit. We're just going to pause here for the last few moments in a brief meditation if you have time to stick around. So make yourself really comfortable with a straight back. That's nice. Please flutter your eyes closed or even just cast them down to a single point if you prefer. And we're going to dwell on the inner body as we have been through our practice today. Checking in with what we might call the heart light, the brightness in your torso we've been imagining. And identifying with your in breath as you breathe in imagine the light gets brighter like a dimmer switch turning up let's do a few of those inhale and brighten that's lovely you might get this feeling of brightness increasing in the upper body and we're going to use this bright this light and can we Send it down towards your lower body now and into your feet, even so all the inside of your legs and feet and toes. It's filled with light. Inhale and brighten. We're going to send it down into our arms and wrists and hands and fingertips now. So the inside of our arms is filled with light. And up through the neck into the inside of your head even. Inhale and brighten up. So the whole of the inner body is made of light. It's getting a bright feeling on the inside. As you inhale and brighten more, this glow is going to penetrate Subtly through the boundary of your skin. See if you can imagine this glow coming outside of you now and all around you. So the whole of your body, every part is surrounded by a fuzzy glow. Bask in that glow for a few moments. Every part of you surrounded with light. And now we bring the hands together at the heart. Just drop the gaze to your fingertips. Just becoming aware of the world around you. And may the, the Shakti be with you. This universal creative force. Thank you so much for your time and energy and your bravery. And namaste to you all. Here again Sunday night and Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, of course, if you are around. Otherwise, it'll be the lovely Joe and Hazel and JP and all our usual friends. <laughs> Even dinky little Alice is making an appearance. <laughs> right, so I shall make it possible for you to unmute yourself now if you've got any comments on that. And I'll send you through the proper timetable when I've got it confirmed. Thanks so much.